what is a black swan event and why is it essential to consider uh, these kinds of events when planning for disasters? Sure. So this chapter is about long-tailed distributions. And I borrowed the vocabulary. The black swan is a term that Nassim Taleb uh, posited. He has a book that's called Black Swans. Um, the idea is that a black swan event, something that happens in the world, is something that is unexpected, has a high impact, and it is particularly unexpected based on a model of past events. And so I think some of his original work was focused on financial markets, where if you look at the return of a fund over time or changes in the stock market over time, you could look at past data, you could build a model that describes what has happened in the past, and then you could make a prediction of how likely is it, for example, that we will see a very large stock market crash or for that matter, an earthquake or some other kind of natural disaster. And the original observation is, if you use a simple model like the Gaussian distribution that we were just talking about, you will sometimes be catastrophically wrong because the actual tail of that distribution is much thicker and longer. It goes farther off to the right. And what that means is that very large, rare events happen more often than we would think based on a Gaussian model. So that's, that's the definition of a black swan. And I think the follow-up is, okay, so what can we do about that? And there are, I think, two parts of this. And, and one is sort of the easy part, which is to say, look, if, if you use a bad model, you will get bad predictions. That's not surprising. And in many cases, you can do better simply by using a better model. There are mathematical descriptions of long tail distributions that you can use. The one I use in the book is a student T distribution. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to Gaussian, but it has a long tail. Yeah, yeah. There's some, there's some values of that where it is basically Gaussian. Is it, I think it, is it if you get close to like one? You got it. value of one, then it is a Gaussian distribution or something? That's right, yes. There's a, there's a third parameter that controls the thickness of the tail. And at one extreme, it is just a Gaussian. And at the other extreme, it is an absurdly long tail. And I'll, I'll tell you the example that I give to help people understand how absurd it is, which is, it's based on a Pareto distribution, different from the student T, but it has the same kind of thick tail. And the question is, what would happen if you woke up in a long-tailed world where the distribution of height had the same 25th percentile as it does in our world, and it had the same 75th percentile, but the tail of that distribution was not Gaussian, it was long-tailed. So you wake up in the world, the first few people that you meet would be of unsurprising height. But then maybe you'd go outside and you see 100 people and you see someone who's about six foot 10. You know, that's, that's surprising. In, in only 100 people, that, that would be taller than expected. Out of 1,000 people, the tallest one would be about the height of a tree. Mm. And you'd think, <laughs> okay, this is a different world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the population of the United States, the tallest one would be taller than the distance from the Earth to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> and... In the world population, the tallest person would be taller than the distance from the earth to Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how absurd these distributions are. Right. And it's why we really can't get our brains around them. We are not equipped for dealing with that, that kind of world.